So what we have here is we have a device that is compressing this material as this handle turns. And what we need to do is we need to find the force, the horizontal force pushing on this lever A that will cause 12 kilonewtons of compressive force on this material. And if you want a video explaining all the um, stuff about screws, you can click on this video link and that'll take you to another one of my videos where I explain all the equations involved with that. And we're gonna be using some of those in this video. You can click on this video link that goes and explains all of the wedge stuff and we'll be using both of that in this video. So if you find this video helpful, hit that like button and please subscribe. The first thing we want to do is we want to draw a free body diagram of these wedges and this um, plate that it is pushing up onto the material. And so um, first we're going to draw uh, one, the free body diagram of these wedges. And because they're the same but just mirrored, we're just going to draw one of them. So we have this um, normal force coming off from this um, plate C. So we'll call this the normal force of B sub C, B C, because it is between B and C. And then the normal force down here at the bottom that is between B and D. So we'll call it B D. And then we have our screw pushing on this block. We'll call it S. And so now we need to find our friction forces. So the screw is pushing it towards the middle. So the friction forces are going to be in the opposite direction of pending motion. So it's going to be going in this direction. So we have our friction force and we know that our friction forces is equal to the coefficient of static friction multiplied by the normal force. Well, we are given that the coefficient of static friction is 0.2. So we will say that this is 0.2 NBD. And then we have this one, the friction force is going that way, and it's 0.2 NBC. So now we have that free body diagram, and our directions are this is the x direction, and this is the y direction. And now we're going to draw this part C it is going to have a compression force right here at the top of 12 kilonewtons because that is the goal is we need it to have 12 kilonewtons and then it's going to have its normal forces here and here both are going to be n b c and then we have our friction forces that are acting in the opposite direction of these friction forces. And this is kind of confusing because um, even though there's no real impending motion for this piece other than up, um, the friction forces are going to be in the opposite direction of these friction forces. And so we'll draw them this way. So each of these will be 0.2 um, N, B, C, and N, B, C, 0.2. And now I th the, these sides are small enough and we're just going to say that there's no friction force there because there's not really going to be a normal force um, pushing on those sides. So we're going to neglect any friction that happens on those sides there. So now we have our free body diagrams, we can use equilibrium equations to solve for our unknowns. And right now we have the unknown of the normal force at B, of BC and the normal force of BD, and then our force of the screw S. So first we're gonna sum forces in the Y direction here on part C. So we have the sum of the forces in the y direction equals zero because it is an equilibrium. And then we have our negative 12 kilonewtons at the top. 
we have our um, friction forces and our normal forces since they are going to be the same we are going to be or the normal forces are going to be the same and the friction forces are going to be the same we'll just multiply them by two so we have our friction forces two times by 0 0.2 nbc the component of that that is in the y direction is going to be it's going to be the sine of 15 degrees and then the component of the normal force that is in the y direction is going to be the sine or the cosine of 15 degrees so n bc cosine of 15 degrees and that is because the normal force is 15 degrees off of the vertical and the friction force is 15 degrees off the horizontal so we solve for nbc here because that is the only um, unknown variable we have so nbc equals 6.563 kilonewtons okay we have that unknown solve for now we can sum forces again in the y direction but this time on this member b so we have this normal force bd and we have nbc the component that, that is acting in the y direction will be 6.6 6.563 cosine of 15 degrees and then our friction force is also has a component acting in the y direction but in the positive y direction and it will be 0 0.2 um, times by 6.563 and sine of 15 degrees again so our only unknown here is NBD, we can solve for that. And we get that that ends up being six kilonewtons. And then finally, we can sum forces in the X direction here and solve for S. So the sum of forces in the X direction equals zero because it is an equilibrium. We have, um, 0 0.2 nbd which is 6 so multiply by 6 minus s and plus nbc for the component of it that is in the x direction so 6.563 sine of 15 degrees and then the component of the friction force that is in the x direction will also be positive and it'll be 0 0.2 times by 6.563 uh, cosine of 15 degrees and solve for s and we get that s equals 4.167 kilonewtons and that S is going to be on both um, blocks. So that is how we find the um, force of the screw on the um, onto the block that is pushing this up and compressing the material. Now we need to find the horizontal force that is pushing um, that we need to push with to um, turn the screw to get this force. So now that we know this, let's write this down right here. That this is 4.167 kilonewtons and we'll erase all of this. So, 
Um, now we need to figure out which screw equation we need to use, and I've already got it written up here, but there are three that we need to use, and we know that we have our block here, and the component, all of these components that are in the x direction are pushing against S, we will call that W. And then we have S here. So really, W equals negative S, and so we know that um, our W that we need to plug into our equation here is 4.167 kilonewtons. And from there we have, the, we're given the diameter so we can find the radius, and we can calculate uh, theta and phi. So theta is going to equal the arc tangent of the lead, which is 7.5 millimeters, divided by 2 pi times the radius, which is 12.5. And that comes out to be <coughs> 5.45 degrees and then phi sub s is equal to the arc tangent of the coefficient of static friction um, of the screw and we are given that that is 0 0.15 and plug that in and that one gives us 8.5 Five, three degrees. So now that we have phi and theta, we can use this equation and m, the moment um, needed to cause this force w, um, is going to be the force that we need to push the handle with multiplied by 250. So over here we'll write that f multiplied by 250 equals our radius, which we found was 12.5, multiplied by W, which we found was 4.167 kilonewtons. Now remember that there are two of these blocks pushing in, so it's going to be double this, so times by 2 times by 4.167 times by the tangent of phi plus theta, which comes out to be 13.98 degrees. Solving for F, we get that F is equal to 0 0.1038 kilonewtons, which equals 103.8 newtons. So that is a force we have to push on this handle to get 12 kilonewtons of force of compression onto that material. So just almost a tenth of a kilonewton comes out to be one tw or 12 kilonewtons there in that piece. So that's pretty good mechanical advantage. And so that is a good example of a problem using screws and wedges to solve a problem. Um, if you have any questions or suggestions, you can leave them down in the comments and I will reply to them. Down in the description, I've got some links to Teespring and Amazon where you can go buy some merch from Student Engineering. Buying that helps me out a lot. So if you're new to this channel, my name is Preston Palmer, Student Engineering, and my goal is to help other engineering students like me better understand engineering. So if you found this video helpful, hit that like button and please subscribe.